Good morning, children. So once again, we'll have a recap. Do you know where? Why am I doing the same lesson again and again? So that you are thorough with the lesson. You do not face any difficulty, any problem. Tomorrow I'll take up a new lesson, children. Okay. So once again, let's have a recap. Which lesson? Yes. How the camel got is hump. So children, let's begin. The story tells us a tale. Tale means a story belonging to a time when the world had just begun. So the world had just begun and the animals started working for the humans. There was a camel who lived in the middle of the desert because he did not want to work. Remember children, he was so lazy. He always said hump when someone spoke to him. On a Monday morning, the horse came to him and asked him to join the others in trotting, moving around. The camel replied by saying, Hump. After a while, the dog came to him to ask him to join the rest of them in fetching things, fetching, bringing. He said, Hump. So once again, what did the camel say? He said, Hump. Similarly, when the ox came to him and asked him to plow like the rest of them, he replied with a hump. All three of them reported this to the man. So what did the three animals do? The dog, the horse and the ox. They went and complained about it, about the camel to the man. So remember that children. When the day was about to get over, the man called the horse, the dog and the ox together and told them that they would have to work double time. Because the hump thing won't work. What's that hump thing? The camel. The three got angry and decided to hold a panchayat. What is a panchayat? It's a meeting. It was only then that they found the camel who laughed at them and said hump again and left. Shortly after that, the jinn of all forests arrived and asked the reason behind the three's anger. The horse told him about their double shifts and that the reason behind it was a lazy camel who would not stop saying hump. The jinn took the matter in his own hands and went to see the Camel. The camel was looking at his reflection in the water when the jinn found him. So what was the camel busy doing? The camel was busy looking at his reflection in the pool of water. The camel won't even reply to the jinn properly. Thus he saw in the water that his back was puffing up. It suddenly became a hum. Upon asking, the jinn told him that he has brought his hump over himself as a consequence. Consequence as a result of his own actions and now he should work. So what actions is he talking about? The jinn, what is he talking about? That he was not willing to do any work. So it was a punishment given to the camel. He developed a hump on his back. The camel was confused about how he will work with a hump on his back. The jinn told him that the hump will let him work for three days without having to eat anything. He can live on his hump. Since then, the camel walks and carries his hump, which we now call hump, H-U-M-P, not to hurt his feelings. 
but still does not behave properly. That means the camel has not yet learnt a lesson. Yes, he got that punishment. A hump developed on his back, but as yet he has not learnt to behave properly. Who? The camel. Okay, children, comprehension check. Page number three of your textbook. The lesson. What tasks do you think were assigned to the dog and the ox? Children, we are doing it again and again so that you are thorough with the story, the questions and the answers and you do not face any problem in the examination. I hope you got it. Okay, so the dog was assigned the task of fetching and carrying. Fetching means bringing. The ox was made to plow the fields. Second one, why did the camel live in the middle of the desert? The camel lived in the middle of the desert because it didn't want to work. It was a lazy animal. Yes, what made the dog, the horse and the ox very angry? The dog, the horse and the ox were angry because man, their master, told them to work double time to make up for the camel's idleness. Remember children, the camel was idle, didn't do any work at all. How did the jinn know the horse was complaining against the camel? The jinn was the master of deserts. So he was able to know easily who was the animal with a long neck and long. So he was able to know who the animal was with long neck and long legs. Okay, now page number 5 comprehension check. Page number 5. The first question. The camel was looking at his own reflection in the pool. What does it suggest to you about the camel? This statement suggests that the camel loved its own image in the pool. Perhaps he considered himself handsome looking so he kept on and on looking at his own reflection in the pool of water the camel said hum repeatedly how did it affect him the word hump annoyed the chin he turned hump h-u-m-p-h into the hump on the camel's back what according to the chin was the use of the hump? What was the use of the hump, children? The camel's hump contained food material. It helped the desert animal go without any food for three days. So the camel could remain without food for how many days? For three days. Next question, children. Let's move on to the next one, children. He has never yet learned to behave. In the light of this, what is the writer's opinion about the camel? The writer's of the opinion that the camel has not changed its nature and habits to this day. That means till today. It is as lazy as it was, as idle as it was. Okay, now page number 6. Discuss the following topics in groups. Children, since you are not in your school, so you cannot discuss in groups. So, you think about the answer to these questions and write down. Question 1. Can the story be factually true? So, what's your opinion about it? You write the answer. No, the story is not factually true. It is just an imaginary one. You can add your own points also, children. Okay? 
What according to you is the story about? Consider the following. How the world began? Why everyone should do his or her share of work seriously? How animals are important to humans? How the camel got his ham? The answer children. How the camel got his ham is the right answer. Okay, we move on to the next question children. What do you, sorry, what did you do over the weekend? Were you generally active or idle? So were you active or idle? Okay, write down the answer. Please check your bag before starting to discuss or writing the answer. I'm sure you have not developed a harm because you are not lazy. You were not lazy. Yes, children. Okay, very good. On the weekend, I got up late and relaxed. Everyone does that. Late evening, I watched my favorite TV serial. I played cricket in the afternoon. I have checked my bag and there's no harm. Why do you think there's no harm, children? Because you were not idle. Because you were not lazy. Right, children? Okay, we'll move on to the next question. The fourth one. There are broadly two categories of workers. Those who prefer to do today what they can do tomorrow and those who prefer to do tomorrow what they can do today. Where do you belong? To which category do you belong children? Okay. I personally believe in doing my work promptly and well in time. That's what you're supposed to do, children. Never forget that. Never be idle. Never be lazy, children. Otherwise, you have to suffer. Yeah, children. Okay, 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 okay. Now, shut answer type questions. The first one, children. Why did early man domesticate a few animals? Early man domesticated animals for different purposes. They used them to carry heavy loads, draw carts and plow the field. Next one, which animal in your opinion is man's best friend and most useful to? The dog is man's best friend. It provides security and even draws the sledge on ice. It is known for its faithfulness. Yes, we all know that dog is a faithful animal. The horse and the elephants have also been very friendly to man. Do you think the camel renders no service to man? The camel is rightly called the ship of the desert. It renders a variety of services to man. It is the chief means of transport across the desert. It plows the fields and gives milk and meat to its master. Do you think hump on a camel's back has no use? The hump on a camel's back is an obstruction in riding. But it is very useful. So it is very useful. Yes, it, it contains fat and food. A camel can get its food from the hump for several days. Who was Jin? How did he set the camel ride? Jin was in charge of all deserts. The Jin was in charge of all deserts. So the horse, ox and the dog complained to him. About the camel's laziness. The jinn scolded the camel and gave a hump on its back and ordered it to serve man as it did other animals. Okay, now we have some long answer type questions, children. What made the three very angry? 
the three that is the dog the horse and the ox for hard working animals they did different works for men the dog carried heavy loads the horse drew carts and the ox plowed the field these three were fed up with the camel because he didn't want to do any work very lazy animal yes children so one day they complained to man about the camel's laziness at this the man became angry he told the three to leave the camel alone and work double time to compensate camel's work that made the three very angry they held a panchayat panchayat means meeting but everything proved in vain useless in vain means useless the camel were, came chewing chewing cud you know like the cow laughed at them how did the camel get a hump in the beginning the camel was a lazy animal he didn't want to walk and lived in the middle of a desert away from the other walking animals but the animals never forgot him and his nature they wanted him to work like them they uh, they complained against him to the jinn who was in charge of all the deserts the jinn decided to punish such an idle animal he told the camel to work like the other animals but the camel showed no willingness to work he was not interested at all this made the jinn angry he put a curse on the camel soon what happened he developed a hump on his back this is how the camel got a hump children children some in- interesting facts about camels camels are known to spit but when they do this they are actually bringing up their stomach contents which is then mixed with saliva and projected out the mouth out of the mouth so it is projected out of the mouth with this they are aiming to distract surprise or bother a threat they learn the spitting behavior from other camels and those raised in captivity with other species will not spit camels were used to transport items around and this earned them the nickname ships of the desert it was for this purpose they were brought to australia they have also been used for transport and source of meat milk and even wool a baby camel is known as a calf within 30 minutes of their birth they can walk how amazing children yes on uh, average a camel will live for 17 years interesting fact yes children children something about camels diet they are herbivores they feed on a range of plants including thorny plants as they have thick lips these animals can go several months without food children this is just general information this is for your knowledge okay much of the moisture they need comes from their food they can drink though ingesting as much as 145 liters in a single session that much liquid they can intake they can go a week or more without water oh my god just imagine children range camels originated in north america today though they can only be found in africa and asia the bactrian camel lives in eastern asia while the dromedary camel could be found across northern and eastern africa two types the middle east and the southern asia dromedary camels are now considered extinct in the wild throughout the natural habitat very less in number these days one of the world's largest population of wild camels can be found in australia a number of dromedary camels were released here and now they can be found across much of the 
interior of the car. Look at the picture there. Dromedary camel. Camelus dromedarius it is called. Camel species. There are two species. Bactrian camel. Okay. They have one. Uh, these are the camels. Uh, Bactrian camels are the one with two humps. You know. Two types exist in the wild domesticated Bactrian camels. See, look at their length and breadth and height and weight. Oh my God. So, the dromedary camel has only a single hump. And that is their length and all that. Yes, children. Okay, see, look at that picture. Beautiful. They have got two humps. Bactrian camel. And look at this dormitory camel. So beautiful. Yes, children. So I've given you some extra information. I hope you enjoyed this session. Yes, children. So read the story once again. And I'll give you an assignment today. Try to find out more about the Bactrian camel and Dromedary camel and write down in your notebooks, children. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice day.